Hey y'all, Tom, ND3N here, and come on in, make yourself comfortable for a ham shack chat. This time we're going to be talking about our output power. We need more power. Now, first I'm going to discuss some unusual trends I'm seeing in the VHF and UHF mobiles and handhelds. Then we'll take a look in the HF world and ask the questions. How much power do I really need? And are we abusing the privilege? Now, a couple of disclaimers before we get into the meat of this video. Uh, I am not a QRP enthusiast, but I have a great deal of respect for those of us who are. Working with a minimal amount of power and maximizing their operations by making sure their entire system is optimized and that their operational skills are far above par. These guys and girls represent some of the best of us. Everything I'm going to say in this video is my opinion, based on nearly four decades of experience and making and correcting a lot of mistakes. Leading new ham so that they don't repeat my mistakes and some of my personal philosophies about the hobby. So please don't take this as a personal criticism against anyone. However, please consider my words and take this as an opportunity. Typical government overregulation. FCC Part 97.313 defines transmitter power standards. It starts with something we probably, hopefully, all know. An amateur station must use the minimal transmitter power necessary to carry out the desired communications. It then goes on to state that no station may transmit with a transmitter power exceeding 1.5 kW PEP, that's peak envelope power. Now it carries on and says there are further limitations of power under certain circumstances, in certain bands, and even locations. But let's focus on the first two statements for the rest of this video. Another caveat for myself, in the close to four decades that I've been a ham, I have never used more than 100 watts of power on the HF bands, nor have I ever felt a need to. Shoot, I feel guilty when I up my power to 50 watts for operating FT8, and I usually run 10 to 25 watts there. I've never run more than 50 watts on the VHF and UHF bands, and usually run in the 20 watt range there. The other day, jumping back to FT8, I came across a guy who was running a kilowatt on FT8. Not wanting to point fingers, but geez. Mind you, I'm not pointing any fingers. Lord knows you start pointing fingers and someone's gonna get poked. That guy was abusing the privilege. Now, I recently did a video where I listed available mobile rigs. I noticed that while most had a max output of 50 watts, there were several that boasted 65 or even 80 watts out. I also noted that these rigs were the lower priced monobanders. So there wasn't a money thing, it was just they were trying to shine better. Uh, as the rigs progressed up with capabilities and multi-bands and digital voice and all of that sort of stuff, all those powers were tapped off at 50 watts. This is marketing at its finest and complete bullpucky. The difference between 80 and 50 watts is about 2 dB, which is not enough to make a difference. Take a look at this video for uh, more information about the dB. As the dB is a logarithmic function, the same math applies to HTs with a marketing driven output of 8 watts versus the standard 5 watts. With the HTs though, the biggest limitation that they have is the crappy rubber duck antennas, which are not much more than radiating dummy loads. Even if you have a aftermarket antenna and it advertises that you can work around the world on a quarter of a watt, uh, don't believe it, they are all dummy loads. To illustrate this, 
Just a few years ago, I had just picked up an ID51A, uh, that's a, a handheld D-Star rig, and was a little frustrated that I was having problems holding a D-Star conversation using a D-Star repeater atop a 100-foot tower located about 10 miles away as the crow flies over pretty flat land. Uh, I was at my home QTH and I could get an intermittent signal if I was on the second floor of my home transmitting through a window on the side of my house pointing toward that repeater. However, I couldn't get anything from the repeater if I was anywhere else in my house. I enlisted a friend's help and uh, he was giving me reports on what he heard. So I went to my basement where my shack was located. Obviously, I didn't operate from my basement. Uh, I pulled off the rubber duck and connected the HT to my external antenna, but it was a good outside antenna. I got a solid signal with five watts out and progressively reduced the output power of the 51A until I was sitting at the lowest setting of 100 milliwatts and was still getting a fantastic connection, as confirmed by my friend. I even had a short CUSA with a ham in Australia, also with good reports. Most hams will be using these rigs to hit local repeaters. VHF and UH propagation is line of sight, which means if you can see the repeater, you can work the repeater, provided you have a decent antenna. Additionally, if two hams are attempting to hit a repeater, because in FM the strongest signal wins, call this the capture effect. If you're running hotter than everyone else, then you can monopolize the repeater input, which sounds nice for you, but not so much for the others who will have to wait for your QRT to have their say. It's kind of selfish. Again, if you can hit the repeater with 5 watts on an HT or 50 watts on a mobile, try lowering the power to medium or low outputs and you'll be surprised at how well it will work. Uh, and your battery will last a lot longer and your power supply will probably thank you. Now let's consider the HF band. Most modern HF rigs have a maximum output of 100 watts PEP. And this is more than sufficient for most QSOs. You can test this the next time you're having a rag chew. When you get a signal report, that is something over 5.9. Now see how far you can reduce your power until you are getting 5 by 9 and nothing over. For example, if you get a 5.9 plus 20 dB, that means you could theoretically reduce your power to 1 watt, that's assuming that you started at 100 watts, and still get a 5.9 signal. Now, as far as dB goes, I'm not going to get into it. I do have that other video. I recommend it uh, that you can go take a look at it and see how it all works. For quick reference, plus 3 dB is a doubling of power and minus 3 dB is a halving of power. Plus 10 dB is 10 times the original power and minus 10 dB is one tenth the original power. So, if you take your 5.9 plus 20 and are using 100 watts, a reduction of 10 dB will give you 10 watts out and they will give you a signal report of 5.9 plus 10. If you're using an amplifier and running a total of 1,000 watts, a reduction of 10 dB would give you that 5.9 plus 10 as the signal report from your original 5.9 plus 20 but you're only using 100 watts now. Amplifiers are very expensive, especially if you get a brand new one with all the bells and whistles. For a fraction of that cost, you can improve your antenna system with a multiband Yagi atop of a 40-foot tower and with a rotator to point your beam. One thing that a nice antenna setup will give you that no amplifier will is front to back and front to side isolation. That means instead of hearing everything coming in from all directions, you're just hearing what your uh, Yagi is pointed at. And this improvement in your received signal 
is something that only a good antenna will give you. Perhaps you live in an area where you cannot put up a tower. But even mounting an inexpensive tri-bander, a Yagi, on a basic mast and mounting it to your roof with a heavy-duty tripod and an inexpensive rotator, you can even get away with without using the rotator sometime because you know the best place to point it and you're just going to tweak off of that. But if you can afford it, get, get a rotator, well, but that will give you significant improvement for both your transmit and receive signals. In summary, for HTs and mobile rigs, the higher powers offered by some manufacturers are strictly marketing advertisements. If a mobile rig can work a repeater with 50 watts, you can probably work that same repeater with 10 or 20 watts. If an HT can work a repeater with 5 watts, you can probably work the repeater with 1 or 2 watts. And your battery will last a lot longer. The big limiter for an HT is the radiating dummy load known as a rubber duck. The most important piece of equipment in any ham station is the antenna that, by the way, will cost you a fraction of the price of an amplifier while getting much better results. A few thoughts before I put a bow on this. I have a certain philosophy when it comes to asking for likes. Like me, like me, like Shares. Thanks for sharing. Didn't know. And comments. Comments? Questions? I always put these at the end of the video because at the beginning or the middle of the video, I simply haven't earned them. I hope that I have earned them now for this video and provided some good information and maybe even a little bit of entertainment. I've also stopped asking for people to subscribe to this channel because I feel that if I produce good quality videos with good information and entertainment occasionally, people will subscribe without me asking. You know, it's like the baseball movie. You build it and they will come. 73 until the next, hey y'all, thanks for taking time out of your busy day and limited YouTube time to drop by in for a Ham Shack chat. I'm Tom, ND3N, and I am out.